Good morning. Good to see you out today. We're having some beautiful weather, uh, even though it's supposed to get hot again tomorrow, I think, for a few days. But we're excited that you're here with us to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. If you are new and among us, we welcome you. And I would ask if you would mind to fill out the perforated edge of your bulletin. Just put your name and phone number. I'd like to be in touch with you. Uh, be there to pray for you if you ever have need of prayer. Uh, we all need that, don't we? But we're excited that you're with us this morning. Thank you for being here. A few announcements. Uh, there will not be any children's church this morning. Uh, the children will stay out here uh, watching. Uh, we have Kylie's going to be baptized, and so I think it would be nice for them to experience that baptismal service. Uh, also, don't forget uh, Tuesday there will be a dinner hosted here on behalf of Miss Patsy Dean's family. So ladies, uh, you all, if you wouldn't mind to uh, keep that in mind, prepare a dish and dessert maybe and bring that by Tuesday. The funeral's at 1, and so I'd say somewhere around 2 o'clock uh, the family will be coming over for a meal. So we want to continue to keep that family in our prayers. Uh, pray for Centennial Church this week. Uh, choir practice will be today at 5 o'clock. Don't forget season of prayer for state missions and Eliza Broadus offering is uh, begins today through the 15th. Offering envelopes are in the bulletin racks and on the tables as you come in and go out. Please give as God would lead to support mission work in our state. Our church has received grants from this offering to help with the food pantry. So we want to be generous and gracious in giving back as God has truly and so blessed us in that sense. Baptist women will meet today at 4 o'clock. Volunteers are needed for our cottage prayer meetings. Uh, they'll be on October the 3rd, October the 10th, October the 17th, and October the 24th. If you'd be willing to host one of those cottage prayer meetings, our revival's coming up. Brother Larry Frazier from down in western Kentucky will be coming. I promise you will not want to miss hearing Brother Larry. I guarantee you that. So you be praying as God would have you to uh, do so and maybe lead in one of those college prayer meetings. Deacon training, September the 16th from 6.30 to 8.30. Alan Dotson will facilitate. Andy McDonald will lead in the evangelism part of it. And so you uh, men, uh, keep that in mind. Deacon training is Tuesday, September the 16th. Our homecoming is uh, celebrating 70 years, will be the 22nd. Uh, be sharing that with those abroad. Uh, be preparing and praying for that, that we will have a wonderful time in celebrating 70 years of ministry here at Fellowship Baptist Church. Make your favorite dish and dessert and invite everyone to attend. There will not be any evening services that day, but the chapel quartet will be with us, and we will be uh, looking forward to hearing them and the message that Brother Harley will be bringing us on that day of our homecoming. Open prayer time is Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock. Don't forget that. If you're out and about, if you can make it, we'd love to have you to come be a part of our prayer time of praying for our church, our country, and our community. Don't forget our ongoing ministries here at Fellowship Baptist Church, Bags of Hope Food Pantry, Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Ministry, and Box Tops for Education. And we do deeply appreciate all those that support those ministries. So this morning... Or scripture verse of the week, can any man forbid water that these should be not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? That's in Acts 10, verse 47. Let's go to the Lord in the word of prayer and ask God's blessings on our time together today. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to come and thank you right now. Father, thank you for the stillness of the moment. Thank you for allowing us into your company, Lord. Father, we're thankful today that we can come into this place apart from the world, apart from those things that hinder us, Lord, sometimes from your worship and how worthy you are to be worshiped. Father, we just pray today for those that are going to be baptized. We pray, Lord, if there's any here that has never made that decision and need to confess their sins and repent and invite you to be Lord of their lives on behalf of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary. I pray that today is that day, Lord. 
Oh God, I thank you for the many blessings of this life. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you this morning for each and every precious soul that sits in your midst. Father, may you bless us this morning. Bless Brother Ronnie, those that are playing the instruments, our choir, the congregation as we sing and lift up these hymns of praise. Father, may they prepare our hearts for what you have in store. Oh God, we thank you and we praise your holy name and we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. All birthdays? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's great. For the sake of time this morning, we're going to move on. And so, Brother Ron, if you'll come and lead us. Uh, but we usually have a time of greeting, but we're going to move on, uh, being as we have some to baptize. You know, we were going to baptize some, and then Brother Gary called me later last night saying that there was a hole in our baptistry. We wouldn't be able to do it. So this morning I came in, I said, we're not going to be able to do it. And Callie's birthday is today, and what a special day that would have been for her and then Brother Gary come back, said he and Virgil and some of them got together and they done whatever needed to be done. Uh, they, I don't know, they might have got some duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got it fixed for us to do baptism. Now the water might be a little cool, but we'll remember it. So praise God. I'm glad you're here this morning. Brother Ronnie, you come lead us. This will be our offertory hymn, 253.
Amen. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to the book of Acts this morning. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. I was sharing with someone when Brother Gary called me last night and said the baptistry wasn't going to be fixed. I said, well, I better go with something other than the message that God had given me for this morning. And so I got into the Word and stayed up for a while, and the Lord gave me a message. And so maybe we'll hear that next Sunday. We'll see. But uh, thank God for the opportunity to get to come and share His Word with you. Let's stand in reverence to the Holy Word of God and begin in verse 26 of chapter 8 from the book of Acts. Thus saith the Lord, And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Cadence, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who should declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And they went on their way and they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let's pray, please. Our Heavenly Father, as we humble our hearts before you right now, we bow before your throne, we bow before your holiness, Lord. Oh God, we just thank you for this time. And Father, we ask that your blessings be up on the reading of your word. I pray, Lord, that you have helped us now already preparing our hearts to just pay close attention to what you would reveal to us this morning. That Lord, again, if there be anybody here that's never trusted you, today is the day of salvation. Lord, I pray for this service, and I pray, Father, that you'd use me. I pray that you'd hide me. I pray that your sweet Holy Spirit would just make your voice known through me as your vessel. And, Father, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you do. For we ask it in the precious, the sweet, and the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So we find here in this story of the Ethiopian eunuch, the story of what is revealed to you and I as God's children as believer's baptism. Believer's baptism. And then over in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, we find there is mention of a different baptism. That is John's baptism. And so they both correlate, but what is the difference between believer's baptism and John's baptism? And if the sweet Holy Spirit would allow me this morning, I'd like to explain or express that to you. John's ministry was short. That was just speaking of John the Baptist there. His ministry was about uh, somewhere between six months and a year long before he was arrested for preaching the gospel, for preaching the good news, for preaching the truth. And then not long after he was arrested, we know the story about how he was beheaded. But there was lots of evil in the days of John the Baptist. Evil ran through the government of Rome. The religious leaders, uh, being the Jews, were a wicked bunch. They were so wicked that actually they cried out for the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it was a wicked time. Uh, we live in wicked ways today. There's a lot of wickedness within our country. 
But John was a preacher crying out in the wilderness, and as he cried out, he cried out and he preached to those people that were coming to him in the wilderness, repent, repent and be baptized. In other words, he was signifying there, the implying there is that they had sin in their lives and that they needed that sin to be forgiven and that it could be washed clean, be purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus hadn't come on the scene at that time. We know a little later as he was baptizing there that he looks up and he said, behold, the Lamb of God. It was Christ himself coming. But at this time, he was preaching to all people. He wasn't just specifically picking out this person or that person or this group or that group. He was saying to everybody that you have sin in your hearts, you have sin in your lives, and you need forgiveness. And Jesus Christ is the one that has come to forgive you by the way of the cross and the blood that will be shed on the cross of Calvary. And so it was much needed in that day as much as it is today it's not a popular message, is it? It's not popular to talk to people about their sins, but it's something that we need, friends. It's something that we need in order to be purified by the blood of the cross, in order to in, have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ placed in our lives and given us the right to approach the Heavenly Father. We have to repent of that sin. And pride stands in the way so often, so often. Don't let pride hinder you from what God wants to do in delivering you from the awful, sinful wreck of life that you're living. So John's baptism was the acknowledgement of one's sin and to confess your sins, and so it was a baptism of repentance. And believer's baptism, as we read here about the Ethiopian eunuch, identifies with one in Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection. Believer's baptism is publicly declaring that the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection is the basis for your and my salvation. It was on behalf of what Christ done in going to the cross of Calvary that we could have eternal life. Baptism, my friends, as you and I know, or I hope you and I know, does not have anything to do with saving you. Baptism will not save you. If you're depending on baptism to save you, all you're going to do is get wet. It will not save you. But by John's baptism, by the baptism of repentance, when you confess your sins, knowing that Jesus Christ died for those sins and invite Christ to forgive those sins and be Lord of your life, then you enter into believer's baptism by the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Baptism symbolizes death to sin and birth to a new life in Jesus Christ. It's a marriage covenant, we might call it, that is between you and the Lord. And that is a marriage covenant that is everlasting. Once we enter into that covenant, it is everlasting. It is throughout eternity. What a blessing God bestows upon us that when we're willing to confess our sins through the repentance of John's baptism and enter into believer's baptism, that we have that throughout eternity. That's security. It's a testimony of our faith in Jesus Christ. It's an important stage in your life. As you're getting baptized today, I want you to know just a few things as we close here. Your Christian life is going to depend on your relationship to Jesus Christ. Your Christian life, your Christian life is going to depend upon your relationship to Jesus Christ. But that's not all it's going to depend upon. It's going to depend upon your relationship to the Holy Word of God. It's going to depend upon his church. It's going to depend upon his children being like faith believers. I share this with our congregation quite often. We need to know that that is important in our relationships because that is what will keep us on the straight and narrow. That is what will keep us from being directed off or being taken away off of the beaten path sometimes. If we just stay connected through the right relationship with the one that loved you and I so much, Jesus Christ, if we'll keep that relationship where it belongs and we'll keep our relationship with the Word of God to stay hungry and thirsty for the Word of God 
If we will stay hungry and thirsty for the church as a whole, if we will stay hungry and thirsty for like faith believers, my friends, it makes it a whole lot better path to travel on, don't it? We've all experienced that. We've all experienced that if you get off path in your relationship to either of these four, that it will make way to guide you in the wrong direction, that you just don't have what you once had in becoming that believer in Jesus Christ through believer's baptism. And so this morning, we have some candidates that are going to come and be baptized, and we just want to thank the Lord. But right now, we want to take a, a minute to have a, a time of invitation. If the ladies would quite, quietly slip to the instruments, we want to invite you, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ, or maybe you've never really come to the fuller understanding of what the difference between John's baptism and believer's baptism is. Believer's baptism, you can enter that just being based on the death, burial, and resurrection and feel like you've been saved. But my friends, listen. If you haven't experienced John's baptism, if you haven't repented of your sins, you need to do that. You can do that this morning and you can be cleansed. You can be purified. You can be made whole. You can become brand new a brand new creation for the cause of Jesus Christ and for the glory of God, our Heavenly Father. And maybe you need to come this morning. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. But whatever it might be, I pray that you'll come this morning as we sing what number, brother? 305. 305. Let's stand, please.
hope you realize what a blessing you're experiencing, friends. This is a, this is a blessing. baptize you, my brother Donald, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. took some determination. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to our Lord. We'll make sure he gets back down the steps safely. Those men have him though.
quite an honor for me. I met Kenzie, oh gosh, when she was a little bitty girl. And she made a profession of faith back down in Western Kentucky, and they've moved up here and become a part of our family. And she wanted to wait and get baptized up here by Pastor Lynn. So I'm really honored today to baptize you, my sister. So I baptize you, Mackenzie, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Another very special young lady, as all of you know, Kylie. And Kylie, upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. to you from the fifth chapter of John in the fifth verse it says a, a certain man was there they're sitting around the pool of Bethesda which was a pool that a healing pool the angels would come down once a year and stir the water and whoever got in it first would be healed. In chapter 5 it says a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. He was crippled and bedridden for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case he saith unto him wilt thou be made whole then Potter man answered him said sir I have no man when the waters is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. So this man was laying in the, beside the pool for 38 years, had no one to help him get in the pool to be saved, to be uh, healed but we've seen this morning we have how men here ready to help this brother get into the pool and, and be saved it's, this has been a marvelous morning great morning this 182 Turn your hymn books to 182, please. Just stand as we sing. Thank 
Turn to page 300.
ever get tired of singing? I don't either. <laughs> Three thirty. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Let's do Three thirty. Amazing Grace. As I think what we've seen here this morning is amazing. It's been amazing.